Hey, welcome back to Mixing with Depth with CLA and Waves. In this episode, we're going to talk about what gear I actually use to create all this depth. But remember, at the end of this series, I'm going to show you how you can do it inside your DAW. So come aboard. <laughs> Well, back before digital, these were our plugins, okay? So these are the effects that I still use today. For a mixer, your toolbox is only as good as what's in it. I tried to accumulate all the digital reverbs that were made so I'd have every single flavor ever made for digital reverb, okay? Each one of them has its own character. And I wanted to make sure that my reverb drawer was completely full. So let's talk about them quickly, okay? Number one, it's the most important reverb that I use on every mix. One of the first ones I started using, the Lexicon 480L, an original from the 80s. It's been in every recording studio around the world. It is like milk when it comes to cereal, and it is like cream and sugar for your coffee. So it's something I've been using since day one. I can't beat the way this thing sounds for a vocal plate. So it's literally set on a plate with some pre-delay, usually around 150. Sometimes that changes, but generally that's the setting. This is my reverb, the one that I have on vocals ready to go. It's got its own sound, and I don't want to mess with it, okay? So reverb numero uno, the Lexicon 40L. Reverb B, which is really a combination of two reverbs. The main one, well, everyone knows Chris Lord Algae loves the Sony DRE 2000 or 2000A made back in the 80s, my favorite decade. I've been using it since the early 80s, and I must have 11 of them. Some work, some don't. They're all called by the names of the Three Stooges. I just booted it up, so this is the boot up setting. I'm gonna have to change it to what I use, which will be D reverb at one second, all right? Imagine this, and I'll set these parameters here, and then my early reflection would be 10, if I can get it to work, right? and then 15 and 20. And I've been setting it like that since 1984. Okay, but that's the sound it has, okay? So this is my room sound, my drum special sound. But when you combine that with Bercasti, on I think it's the Marble Room at one second or Studio A, which I'll use, those two together create what I call the B reverb. Okay, so these are used for drums, instruments, anything that I want a short room on. Let's move on to the C reverb, which is another combination of two reverbs. Two reverbs that are kind of tough to come by. An EMT 246, it has a really cool remote. That's why I got it. And it actually sounds pretty good. I basically have that on a short room, and then its companion would be the Yamaha Rev 1 which to me is the first Yamaha reverb they came out with. And it has the biggest remote with the most buttons on it I've ever seen. I remember back when I was mixing Stevie Nicks with uh, Jimmy Iovine, and he was over mixing Simple Minds with Bob Clearmountain. They were using that to get the snare drum sound, to get the snare drum reverb. So I had to plug that in and use it. And ever since I used it on that one mix, he goes, wow, this is pretty good. I haven't stopped using it. So that's just like percussion plate, 1.6 seconds. So that's my C reverb, the combination of those two flavors, okay? Let's move on to the hall, right? The longer one, the trick one. Funny enough, that's an H3000 on dense room. Really, Chris? An H3000 with all those reverbs you got? And believe me, I have every single one. That is a dark, dense, cavernistic, long reverb. I love how it sounds, so that's my D reverb. Here's another device, we turn it off. Hopefully it turns back on. And this is the AMS reverb. This has been in studios long before I started. No, this has been in studios since the 80s. So we just toggle up to our preset that we use. When you hear a big drum fill leading into a chorus, this is what gets opened up. This is what I use to make that big drum moment happen, which is of course the AMS RMX 16 set on non-lin. The only difference between stock and what I do, if I go to program here, right? I go to the stock non-lin, I go and just make it brighter. So this becomes my space preset, which gives like the gated reverb effect, but it, it floods it with reverb. So it's really used a bit of a secret weapon. Now, if I'm going into something that's more 80s or more ambient, it's on all the time. But yeah, another flavor I use in my arsenal. So there's the palette of reverbs, okay? Let's move on to the delays. Delay one, tape slap. The Marshall 
tape eliminator that has three settings. A would be 30 IPS, B would be 15, C would be seven and a half. So I leave it at B. And you have this VSO, which I'm leaving at 100%, so it's exactly 15, right? So that's the setting. And then my throw delay is right here. That is a Line 6 Echo Pro, pretty simple, okay? So on this, I will go to BPM, put it at 120, right? Go back to the display, so that's quarter note, right? And then that's at 500, analog with mod, okay? Pretty much as it sits. So it's all set and forget. Levels are set, not a problem. That's delay number two. Delay number three, I call them the twin lexicons. So lexicon PCM42, you've seen one in every recording studio in the world. I sent them to eighth note and they're not exactly the same. So if the eighth note is 250, then one's like 240 and the second one's like 255. So I try to put a spread of anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 milliseconds in between them to make kind of a stereo spread. Well, back here on the other side of the room, let's point to what I call delay number four, a one that's called crowd. The one that I use all the time as a little bit of a secret weapon is the Ursa Major Space Station, a one-of-a-kind unit with a one-of-a-kind sound. It's like a whole bunch of short delays in it that's kind of dark, but it gives it like a very live kind of slap feel, like a stereo slap, but but to the point where it's, to me, it's very musical. And that gets used to add a little bit of a, a club sound or a, a just a little bit more dimension to instruments to the point where you actually hear the guitar kind of ricocheting off the walls, but not in a very obvious long delay manner. So basically four delays and four reverbs. And I look at it that way. I look at it as four banks, okay, four cents. Even though I'll package multiples together, that becomes my palette that I work from. So let's talk about routing, okay? We've talked about the reverbs. We've talked about delays. We've talked about sending from delays to reverbs. Well, how do we matrix this? How would you do all this routing here? The way I make it work, I have six sends, and I have obviously buses. So I use a combination of both to make this happen. And I do some sharing. So uh, four reverbs end up being on two sends. So the matrixing goes like this. Send one, vocal reverb. Send two, drum reverb. Send three, drum and instrument reverb, okay? Send four is throw delay. Send five is an AMS DDL sitting up here. Send six is crowd, the Ursa. So my vocals right here, okay, are bussing, okay? All of them are bussing to a subgroup next to it. And then what happens is in order to get to the slap, we have over here, we have bus one. Slap and the reverb go on that, okay? The delays, bus five and six. The vocals also have the crowd on it. Then next to our vocal subgroup is our throw fader, appropriately located because that's next to the vocals. So imagine putting this in Pro Tools. How much hair are you gonna be ripping out trying to get this to work in Pro Tools? It's really not ergonomically friendly to even attempt this in your DAW yet. Because of the egonomics of this beautiful Solid State Logic console and how it's built, I'm able to look and see all this at once, okay? So the thing is, you're painting this picture, opening in the song, you're like, no, 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 not that much. Maybe just a little reverb, a little crowd, okay? B section, let's add the slap. Chorus, let's add the delay, okay? So you can go any way you want. You can say, oh, well... I just want to have this long haul just for this one breakdown vocal. You can just use, it's going there. So you can pull everything else and just have that return. You can get to a breakdown of the song, pull them all down and automate it. So you're automating the level and muting of this section of the console, right? That's just the routing for the vocal. Let's talk about the drums, okay? It's got four reverbs on the drums. And you, you, you figure out, you know what? I want to put my drum reverb on the, the room sound, the, maybe the samples, a little bit of the overhead, maybe a tiny bit off the dry snare. Maybe the song builds, okay? The opening can be like, ah, just this guy. B section, ooh, this guy. The fill into the chorus, whammo, turn this up, build into the chorus, back down, okay? 
Breakdown, Zippo. Okay, back into the chorus, Phil. Boom, they're back up. Now we've created this landscape that now goes valleys and, and hills and far away, over the hills and far away, like Led Zeppelin. Okay, so now from just being a one-dimensional situation, we're taking this palette and giving us all these options. This is how you get to mention in a mix, blending all of these together to create the most subtlest of landscapes. Because the big mistakes that I feel, you know, I'm not going to criticize anybody for how they do it, but I'm going to say, okay, here's your vocal over here. Here I am, la la la, singing the song, going along. Vocal, reverb. Vocal, delay. I mean, the delay is like lonely, it's boring, it's dry, right? Or vocal, slap, All right? Okay, well, it's so much better to have vocal delay, and then this has some sexy reverb on it, okay? And then you feather in the vocal reverb, and then the atmosphere gets better, whether it's with a guitar, a drum, a vocal, anything, a solo. You go from a, a voice with a little bit of verb, and then a little bit of delay to a little three-dimensionality. And that's what this does, okay? You set all these effects, okay? They're preset, okay? Tempo based, time based, it's done. You're not touching these. How you blend those. You're saying, okay, I have, you know, I have my eggs, I have my milk, I have my baking powder, my salt, my pepper, okay, my syrup, my, my caramel, okay, my butterscotch. I have all these flavors, and I'm making this unbelievable cake out of it, okay? If you take them away and just do one at a time, you got a plain donut right there. A plain donut. I don't want that. I want a little red velvet on my donut. So think about it like that, okay? Do you want to eat your steak just straight up plain? No, you want that with a little salt and pepper. You want a baked potato. You want some butter. You want some barbecue sauce, okay? It's all about life, and it's all about how you combine things. So making music is not about, okay, here's black and white, here's black and white, here's charcoal. No, yellow, orange, purple, green, blue, color. This is like when Wizard of Oz goes from black and white to color, this is where we go in our mixes, okay? When that house landed and they opened it up and they were in Oz, well, welcome to Oz. So now that I've shown you all the gear I use for delays and reverbs, let's actually open up a session and start mixing. So see you in the next chapter of Mixing with Depth. It's 2020 vision, we can all see division. Shedding all our glasses, getting 2020 vision. Precision, more clarity and sight. People come together, see more clear than rock and right. No more blind, it's 2020.